Story 1. I exposed my aunt after she claimed I was faking my disability for attention. She then ends up attacking me and putting me in hospital. Some backstory is needed to fully understand my situation, and a TLDR will be at the bottom. I, 31F, was born with a severe genetic disorder called EDS, hypermobility type. The illness varies greatly from person to person. Most can lead relatively normal lives with some pain and problems. EDS is essentially a group of disorders caused by defective collagen in the body. This results in a host of issues, including joint hypermobility, which causes joints to be so loose and unstable that they dislocate or subluxate, partially dislocate, constantly. Severe joint and soft tissue pain due to the constant dislocations and the resulting damage to the joints, among other things. Extreme chronic fatigue. Skin that bruises easily and, in thin areas, can even tear. Dizziness when standing up because my blood pressure drops rapidly. About 11 years ago, my disorder worsened significantly, and I was forced to start using a wheelchair to get around, as walking more than 100 feet became extremely dangerous for me. The risk of falling due to a hip dislocation was high. In the last three years, I upgraded to an electric wheelchair because pushing a manual chair became too painful. For reasons I don't fully understand, my aunt, 54F, has an extreme dislike for disabled people especially those in wheelchairs who can still move their legs. For 11 years, whenever we were alone, she treated me worse than a dog and insisted that my disorder was completely fake and made up. She claimed I was lying about it because I wanted all the attention focused on me, believing I was jealous of anyone else receiving attention, especially her. I tried to confront her about it and talk things out, but since I was already overwhelmed by my condition, I ended up keeping her comments to myself. Since I'm not confrontational and don't see her often throughout the year, I didn't want to burden anyone with it, especially as I already had to ask for so much help from the people around me, and my parents were exhausted from all the doctor's visits during that time. So, for the past 11 years, I've just ignored every comment she made when we were alone because I had grown accustomed to it. I absolutely didn't care what she thought at this point, and knew she was just being an idiot. That was until things really escalated last week when I went to visit my aunt for our yearly family dinner. She was the one who organized the dinner this year. All was going well until she drank more than usual and became a lot snarkier toward me in front of the family. This caused some family members to call her out and tell her it was inappropriate and uncalled for. She silently fumed, giving me death stares afterward. My parents noticed this and kept an eye on her. Unfortunately, at some point, I went into the kitchen on the other side of the house to take a break from my aunt's stairs and take my medication in private. My aunt followed me into the kitchen and closed the door behind her. I knew this wasn't good since she was clearly intoxicated, so I discreetly started recording the incident on my phone. Since the door was closed and we were far from the others, with many people talking loudly in the other room, no one could hear us, even if I screamed. My aunt began asking if I was enjoying being an attention hog and ruining her dinner by humiliating her. I slowly tried to maneuver my wheelchair toward the door while apologizing, telling her that wasn't my intention. At that point, I tried to say what she wanted to hear so I could get to safety. She started raising her voice, accusing me of being jealous of her success and faking my disorder out of laziness. She began calling me every name in the book, yelling nonsense at me. I started to think she might be having a mental breakdown and began crying, pleading with her to let me go. Realizing I needed to get out of there, I decided I couldn't do so in my chair, so I tried to get out of it. Unfortunately, she turned violent and pushed me back into the chair hard. She screamed that she wasn't done yet and that liars like me needed to be taught a lesson. She started hitting me in the face as hard as she could, which dislocated my jaw. Then she tried to pull me out of the chair dislocating my arm, but I fought back, so she failed. She then somehow managed to push my chair over on its side, causing my foot to get stuck behind the footrest. Luckily, my dad, noticing my absence and that my aunt was also gone, became concerned and began searching for me. My father later told me I let out such a blood-curdling scream that it was audible throughout the entire dining room, prompting him and my mom to sprint toward the sound. At this point, I was starting to lose consciousness from the pain. I remember my dad bursting through the door. From what I was told, my dad body slammed my aunt, his younger sister, 
and punched her to make sure she stayed down. My mom screamed for someone to call 911, which my nephew did immediately. My mom then got me free from the wheelchair and tried to recall her first aid training. Meanwhile, my dad pinned my aunt to the floor while my aunt's husband stood there in complete shock, not knowing what to do. The police and ambulance arrived, and they put my aunt in cuffs. She screamed at my dad, asking how he dared to lay hands on a woman, no less his sister. My uncle then tried to defend my aunt, claiming they didn't know what had happened and that I could have tipped over myself after trying to attack her. He insisted his wife would never do something like this and that it had to be provoked. He apparently said much worse things, but my parents won't specify what exactly. I regained consciousness at this point, likely due to receiving some strong pain medication. It's still a blur because the medication left me disoriented. I was taken away by the ambulance while my aunt was taken to jail. At the hospital, I was found to have multiple fractured ribs, a dislocated arm, and a dislocated jaw. I also suffered a concussion from the punches, but the worst damage was to my foot, which turned out to be broken. I also have cuts and scrapes everywhere because my skin is so fragile. Fortunately, the injuries weren't severe enough to require surgery, but with my disorder, it will take at least 10 weeks in a cast, followed by physical therapy, although my ankle will likely be permanently damaged. I feel guilty for ruining someone's life. I've gotten multiple voicemails from different numbers with her screaming how I ruined her life and probably their finances after this. My uncle is trying to save his own reputation by sticking to my aunt's side, but that's short-lived since he wants a divorce. A few family members and them are making me doubt if I've done something wrong here, so that's why I'm asking if I'm the a-hole. Edited the last paragraph because somehow it disappeared, so I'll type it again. Also for some of the questions yes we're getting a restraining order and pressing charges. The thought of her coming after me is too much. For people wondering how I was given pain meds when I wasn't conscious. As I said I think I regained it due to pain meds but I don't remember a lot of what happened due to the pain but I'll ask my parents when I got the meds. My parents are reluctant to talk about how they found me and what happened because they'd rather have those memories buried instead of haunting me. The footage was handed over to the police and is backed up on multiple platforms. I'm currently thinking I'm going to sue since I have insurance that covers legal costs for me. TLDR. My aunt ended up putting me in hospital and severely injuring me because she thinks I'm faking my genetic disorder to get attention. I recorded the whole attack and put it online after they tried to say I'm lying and I attacked her. Now everyone in our family has gone no contact even her church. Her husband wants to divorce her so she's Ayata for posting it online and ruining her life. Story 2. My sister ruined my life because our parents favor me over her. I, 25F, have always been in competition with my sister, 27F, since I can remember. I was a baby born after a miscarriage our mom had. So my parents were very happy and shifted their attention away from my sister and onto me. I want to clarify that I never took joy in this and I knew that I was favored over my sister due to unfair circumstances. I tried to connect with her growing up because I considered her a really cool person but she always seemed uninterested which only made my parents chew her out for hurting my feelings. Obviously that only caused her to hate me more. When I turned 15, I completely stopped engaging with her. My parents didn't push for us to be friends either and kept their attention on me which has always bugged me because who wants to be coddled in surveillance 24-7? Anyway, things went alright for me and I eventually got myself into a good college and my parents offered to pay for everything, food, rent, school supplies, etc. since I wanted to move out of their house. I wanted to be independent so I declined but when my sister heard of this she was understandably mad as they had refused to pay for anything and told her she needed to learn responsibility by paying for her own things. She blew up at my parents, but mostly at me for stealing away the attention of our parents her entire life and making her miserable. I tried to explain that I agreed that they were bad parents and that she deserved better, but she just told me to shut my whore mouth and that she didn't need my sympathy. My parents forced her to apologize and threatened to cut contact if she didn't. I agree that she was harsh, but I understand how frustrated she must have felt her whole life, so I don't hold it against her. Since she didn't have much of a support system other than them, she sent me a super long apology over text and tried to mend things. Though it was obviously she only did it just because she was forced to. During the first few months of college, I ended up meeting a guy named John, 26M, and we started dating shortly after. 
Everything just clicked, and it seemed like he knew my every thought. At my 20th birthday party, I introduced him to my family and everything seemed to go well. I kept my family and John separate because my parents were always super nosy and my sister seemed extremely judgmental when I would bring company. This time around, she was super friendly though. Looking back, my sister was definitely a little too touchy with him, but I chalked that up to her just wanting to overcompensate to mend our relationship further. After I graduated, John ended up proposing and I said yes as I was head over heels in love. We decided on having a wedding once we had secured good paying jobs and things seems to be perfect between us. Flash forward to three weeks ago and I got the most gut-wrenching message of my life. It was from my sister telling me that she was pregnant and it was John's. In addition to that, she sent screenshots of messages and explicit images between the two. They professed their love for each other multiple times and John said that my sister was the best he'd ever had in his life, despite him saying the same to me. It had been going on for majority of the years we'd been together. To say I sobbed my eyes out would be an insulting understatement. I asked her how she could do this to me and she replied, Now you know how it feels to get your whole life ripped away from you. He loves me more and I'll make sure he leaves your sorry ass for me and our baby. Go cry to our parents and see if I care. And then blocked me before I could respond. I screenshot a lot of it before she did. The bastard I used to call my fiancé came home hours later from work and saw me crying. He begged to know what was wrong and tried to comfort me but I blew up at him and kicked him out. It's my apartment that we share. He admitted to the affair over text and said he loved me but loved my sister too and had to be there for his child so the engagement is off. His brother came and took all his stuff and he hasn't even given me an apology for any of this. I've been crying for basically a month straight and all I want to do is beat the living crap out of my sister but I know I would go to jail, especially since she's pregnant. I used to look up to her so much and I thought that things were finally looking up, but then she decided to backstab me and for what? Mommy and daddy's love that I never wanted in the first place? I barely even like my parents either because of their behavior, but I'm the villain? For fuck's sake you'd think an almost 30-year-old woman would seek therapy or talk to me directly about her resentment but no, she had to sabotage my life for the sake of hers being shit. I can't even feel any sympathy for her anymore and I just want to go away forever. I've had extremely alarming thoughts, but I've just resorted to locking myself in my room all day since I work remotely, and it's calmed down in the last few days. My sister unblocks me occasionally to keep rubbing it in my face that he chose her over me, sending picture of them together and her baby bump. I've already blocked her to make sure she leaves me alone. She's a grown woman for God's sake gloating like child. If he's willing to cheat on me for so long, I feel incredibly bad for their baby, but definitely not for her. I haven't told my parents yet, and I'm unsure how to even go about it. They'd 100% take my side, but they aren't good people, so I don't want their shitty support. I haven't told my friends, and I don't have a therapist. I want to tell someone, but this so incredibly humiliating that I can't bring myself to do much but cry and drown myself in work. I saw myself growing old with him and having my sister as a bridesmaid. Like I really thought we'd grown past our issues, but now they're both together and left me to fend for myself. Again, this is so goddamn humiliating but I need to talk to someone.